Hello everyone and welcome back. A major news announcement and some developments that you're going to want to pay attention to today with Mullen Automotive in a strategic partnership with Bollinger Motors. They sought to buy a controlling interest in the electric vehicle truck company Bollinger Motors. This strategic partnership will allow the current CEO Robert Bollinger to launch production in 2023 of the class three through six medium duty truck classes and restart development of the Bollinger B1 and B2. The purchase price of 148.2 million in cash and stock of a 60% controlling interest. This gives Mullen a majority ownership in Bollinger Motors. We're gonna take a look at the charts. We're gonna take a look at some news, the, some events that are coming up with this play. So stick around, I think you're gonna like what I have. So if we take a look at the major indices first, that way we can understand the Mullen charts at the end of the video, we can see there was a very consistent pattern across all of the major indices. They were up in the morning, then a sharp downturn after 11 a.m. and then it pulled back up again the Fed did speak this morning, so it could have had a lot to do with this volatility trying to be digested by the market. The Fed Chair Powell vows to raise interest rates to fight inflation until the job is done. And when is the job done? Until we get to 2%. And right now, they are set on 75 basis points. And that's exactly what we're seeing from the European Central Bank raising their rates by 75 basis points to tackle soaring inflation. So this isn't just a U.S. problem, but this is something we're going to have to take a closer look at next week when that those CPI numbers come out. And I believe those CPI numbers that are going to come out next week are going to be just as important as they were the previous cycle. So if we keep things simple, CPI is high, that's not going to be a good indicator. And if CPI is low, that's a better indicator. It's not the best because we're still going to be elevated. The assumption is with everything happening in the macroeconomic environment, we're not done with fighting inflation. Russia has cut off gas supplies to Europe indefinitely, and there's that energy crisis that we have been keeping a pulse on. Now, if you do not have a second brokerage account or you're looking to open one, Webull right now has the best deal, and not only just for free shares, I like to use this platform to get a heads up on those IPO launches and there's about nine of those right now that are in the queue to launch either this week and next week. Now it's a two-step process and someone let me know today that they got Apple and they got Snap. So there's some good fractional shares that people have been getting valued up to $300 for that first step. All you have to do is sign up and then deposit any amount. This is free money and that's the reason I wanted to tell you about it. Now let's take a look at the press release, 50,000 reservations critically acclaimed B1, B2 consumer trucks. Now these were put on pause while they focused on the van build. And now it looks like in 2023, they're going to start ramping these back up again. Accelerates delivery of the class four EV trucks to 2023. And there's going to be a call. So just a quick pause because I did listen to the 2 p.m. call. It was about 13 minutes long. And if you'd like to listen to it, it's going to be on their YouTube page. Mullen Automotive, you can find it there as a live call between both the CEO of Bollinger Motors, Robert, and CEO of Mullen. And the biggest takeaway that I took from this very short 13-minute call was the U.S. government potential for the B1, B2 customer truck. So he was explaining, the CEO of Mullen was explaining that when he first seen the truck, that's what he pictured. And none of this conversation really came from Robert, who's the CEO of Bollinger Motors, but the also the commercial aspect. So maybe this could be a money truck, but I would have liked to hear more about what the primary focus is and gen generating revenue from what. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in this video, but they were focused on the collaboration, the timing, cash synergies, engineering synergies, finance distribution network, and capturing revenue and what that's going to look like as they start to put revenue on the books starting next year. So it was it was a short call. I think it left everyone wanting more. Now the acquisition supposedly is one of the largest in the EV industry to date. And I mean, very interesting vehicle look. I mean, this is my first time seeing this, but it does look a little bit like the Hummer. And that's what they're saying down here that they've been looking at this space carefully raising capital in advance. And we believe they have the potential to turn the sector on its head, similar to what Hummer H1 did over 30 years ago. So is this a Jeep? Is this a Hummer? 
uh, you know, very interesting off-road capabilities. Now, if we go to Bollinger Motors and we look at some of the information that they've been putting out and go a couple of months back just to understand this company a little better, you're obviously going to want to want to understand their manufacturing footprint and who, who all they have as far as their manufacturing suppliers. And it looked like they were focused on the vans and some of this stuff could have changed. But of course, we'll be looking at this company for updates. It looks like Bollinger said it's going to provide or source all of the materials to Roush. And Roush is a very good company. It looked like they were focused on manufacturing these vans first and, and they pushed off some other things till later just due to capital reasons. But Roush is a very well-known company. We're going to take a look at them. But they helped build Google's uh, retired Firefly autonomous prototypes cars and Neuro's driverless uh, delivery robots. So if we take a look at Roush, what they did, they have assembly, tooling, machining, and welding. So what I'm looking forward to understanding a little better is will Roush still maintain their manufacturing and assembly strategic relationship while we have a new strategic relationship between Mullen and Bollinger Motors. So I think it would just be very beneficial for the company to maintain Roush as part of their manufacturing and assembly operations. We'll have to see what part of the operations they'll exactly be responsible for because they've got additive manufacturing, tooling and welding as it says here. So do they have the capacity to fit in and what will that shared capacity be? I mean, how many vehicles can they produce at what scale? Be curious to hear all of those details. So Fleet Forward Conference, November 9th to the 11th. This is also something coming up. I know we've got some time in between now and when that happens, but time goes by quick. We've got more catalysts from Mullen in October where they're supposed to be showing more of their vehicle fleet, so expect some more news drops. Let's take a look at what the entry price is for this. For those of you that do believe in buying in low and selling high, you can see that this has just been in a downtrend and we had some selling opportunities. For those of you that even got in too high at 72.50 or below, we've had some selling opportunities up here at 74 cents and it's dropped down. We had a selling opportunity here at 72 cents and a few here even at 69.68, but the buy zone is definitely down here at 62.59 or 6055 it looks to have been holding up pretty well historically but now now we have some definite reassurance that we've got shareholder dilution so how far can we get on these pushes before people take profits i would say if you're a long-term investor and you believe that mullen is going to ultimately survive with shareholder support and that this is somewhat of a meme stock i would say that no matter what you do to this stock, that people are going to hold it long term, I would not buy any higher than right here, 62, 62 to 60. But I would, I would be very greedy with my money and I would look for it to bust below 62 and revisit that 52 week low of 52 cents. It's just, it makes too much sense to be greedy in this market, just understanding what's happening with the macroeconomic factors. That's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next one.